Hello and welcome back to All Things Money. I'm your host, David Blaine. During today's show, we're talking about the Taxpayer Advocates 2012 report to Congress. It has some great nuggets of wisdom in it on a pretty much a nonpartisan basis. Um, you know, unless you have some extreme view of, of taxation, it's got some great points and, and I encourage you to get a copy of it. Go to irs.gov, look for the um, just the part on the most serious problem, number one is what I'm focusing on, most serious problem number one. The whole report, you know, is hundreds of pages long. This is about 20 pages. Um, you can also, uh, if you missed the first couple of shows, head over to our website, dlblaine.com, and you can catch an archive copy of the show. But anyway, the point is that if you were just to eliminate, you know, Congress sets some sort of revenue target, whatever target that is, we're not you know, getting into that right now, neither is Nina Olson, the taxpayer advocate. You set that target and you set the tax rates, get rid of all the deductions, exemptions, credits, things like that. What she calls a zero-based budgeting, just start from scratch, get rid of it all, and then only if something is necessary to, um, you know, some sort of the tax code. But she advocates getting the IRS out of the social engineering you know, the reality is if you think or if the government thinks it's a good idea that people buy a house or something like that, get it out of the tax code. Just send the people a check. You know, let's not g get any pretense here of, of you know, building in the tax code, making it complicated, making ways for people to get around things and um, different things. And, you know, I, I don't advocate we do that, but the point is that if the government wants to do some sort of social engineering, get it out in the open and so that it's not embedded in the tax code and creates headaches for everyone else. Okay, so why do we need this tax reform? Number one reason is the unreasonable compliance burdens on individual taxpayers and businesses. And I can tell you, if you don't own a business um, or you don't have a lot of um, moving parts to your tax picture, you cannot imagine how much time and effort it takes just to comply with the tax rules. Uh, we have business owners, you know, myself included, that spend a significant amount of their time just keeping up with government rules and regulations. A lot of them are tax required. We get this all the time. You know, people come in, like, you know, they have boxes and boxes and boxes of, of paperwork that, you know, you know, their husband died and he's got his tax returns back to 1950 along with canceled checks and boxes of this stuff. Like, Why do you keep that stuff? Well, I'm afraid of getting audited. People are afraid of the IRS. Absolutely ridiculous. The majority of, of record keeping, you know, are you really going to look back at your 1972 tax return to see, you know, how much money you made? You know, no, nobody looks at that stuff. You just keep it and the, the burden of storage and, and things like that, it's just, it's ridiculous. Um, so according to the taxpayer advocate analysis, individuals and businesses spent 6.1 billion hours complying with the tax code last year. Now, this doesn't count responding to notices and things from the IRS, just complying with the initial effort of getting your tax return filed. If you were to translate this tax compliance into an industry uh, to consume 6.1 billion hours is basically the equivalent of 3 million full-time workers. And, and I don't mean that 3 million full-time workers work in the tax industry like CPAs. I'm saying that people and businesses spent the equivalent of 3 million full-time workers complying with the tax code. What, what, I'm, what that means, and that's, that's the IRS's figure, what that means is that these people or all the hours that are spent complying with the tax code could be spent on something productive instead of complying with the tax code. Um, a couple other statistics from that. Since 2001, there have been 4,680 changes to the tax code, an average of more than one a day. Now, even if this is your profession, th there is no way you can keep up with all that. More than one tax code change per day. And, of course, when you read the tax code, um, which, 
has become uh, four million words. The IRS did a, a word count on it. It's over four million words. Um, there's no way to keep up with that. Uh, even if it's your full-time job, the people have become so specialized. I was talking with somebody today who um, earns a lot of income from farming and fishing. There's a whole separate set of rules for farmers and fishermen. Why? Lobbyists is, is the only reason. But anyway, there's no way to keep up with all those, all those changes. Okay, so the burden, keeping up with it, it's just a complete waste of time. Uh, number two, complexity obscures the understanding and creates a sense of distance between taxpayers and government. This is one of the themes, if you listen to my show a lot, this is one of the themes that I'm big on is when you remove, when you place distance between the person either receiving a service, paying for a service, and the ultimate institution is you get these really strange results. We see that in education. Most people take loans out for um, for their education. And so you see the costs of education spiraling. A lot of his loans and grants and government funded. You see the same thing in health care. You know, the insurance company pays it. And so you see costs spiraling out of control. You see the same thing here with taxes is people don't understand it's the, the money is automatically deducted from their pay. And let's face it, most people are trying to get a refund at the end of the year. They don't have any idea what they're paying in tax, they just want to get a refund. which And so we've completely obscured what people are paying and creating a, syst a distance between um, the government and the taxpayer. If you ask people what they pay in property taxes, a lot of people, well, let me say that all. If, you're, if you have a mortgage, you may not know what you pay in property tax, once again, because it's escrowed. Same thing as you've Put a third party in between you that's paying, and so all you know is what your mortgage payment is. You have no idea what your property taxes are. I guarantee you, go find somebody that has their house paid off. They know exactly what their property taxes are because they have to write a check every year to their local county entity for their property taxes. And so they're very cognizant of you know, how the county spends the money and whether it's worth it and things like that. And when you have this huge tax code that the IRS has, you create this gap between people uh, feeling any sort of connection to the money they send. I know I'm that way. It's I don't mind paying taxes, but it just feels like you send it to Washington and it goes in this big black hole and, and it just is all wasted. Um, okay, well that brings us to the end of today's show. Obviously we just touched on this subject. We'll probably continue on this again next week. So I hope you'll come back again and join us. The proceeding was a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media.